Hello and welcome to our service brought to you by members of the Keele University Chapel community. Wherever you are and whatever you're feeling today, we hope and pray that this service will be a blessing to you, a connection to God and to one another. As we begin, let's pray. Living, loving God, in these strange and frightening times, we turn to you, our strength, our comfort and sustainer. Thank you that you are with us in all times and in all places, that you're with us here as we worship today. Open our hearts to encounter you in this service, to know your love and show ours in return. May we find in you our sanctuary and our hope. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yasmin is going to play us a worship song now. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. If you want to sing along or just to reflect on the words, they'll be on the screen.
the psalm that's set for today is psalm number 130. If you'd like to join in, the words are on the screen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who would stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Let's come to God now in a time of confession, bringing before God anything in the last week that we regret, anything that we regret not doing, not in shame or self-loathing, but confident that we come to a God who loves us and who delights to forgive. Let's share together, reading the words on the screen. Loving God, we confess to you the wrong things we have done. We have forgotten what we should have remembered. We have turned away when we should have listened. We have been careless when we should have cared. We have failed to do as we promised. We have behaved in ways we knew would hurt and disappoint you, and we are sorry. In your mercy, please forgive us. Give us a fresh start and help us not to do the same things again. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so far does our God remove our sins from us. Receive the forgiveness of the God who loves you and a new beginning in your walk together. Amen. Hi everyone. Hi, it's me. I hope you're all doing okay. Um, today we're going to have a reading from Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 to 14 and it says the hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley it was full of bones he led me all around them there were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophecy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And 
you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Thanks everyone. Hope you're all doing good. Bye. Bye. Some words from John's Gospel, chapter 11. The sisters sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, but it is for God's glory, so that through it the Son of God may be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that he was ill, he stayed where he was for two or more days before saying to the disciples, let's go back to Judea. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting at the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will grant whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Anyone who believes in me, even though that person dies, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. At the sight of her tears and those of the Jews who had come with her, Jesus was greatly distressed and with a profound sigh he said, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Sighing again, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day since he died. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took the stone away. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, thank you for hearing my prayer. I myself knew that you would hear me always, but I speak for the sake of all these who are standing around me, so that they may believe it was up to you who sent me. Then he said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his feet and his hands bound with strips of material and a cloth over his face. Jesus said to them, unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had been and seen what he did, and they believed in him. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Good morning. I'd really like to not have to think about the coronavirus for at least 10 minutes. Although unfortunately that doesn't really seem possible at this moment. It's become a bit of an all-consuming topic, especially since we're now being told we need to stay inside on top of all the other social distancing measures that are in place. And so naturally it made me chuckle a little bit to read the gospel from this week's lectionary. It contains some pretty earth-shattering, world-altering ideas, especially in that sentence that Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. It also describes one of Jesus' more miraculous moments when he raises Lazarus from the dead, no doubt foreshadowing his own death and resurrection, which occurs not that much later in John's Gospel. But where does the story start? That's right, it starts with Jesus and his disciples going out to see their friends. And at this time of isolation, I feel like maybe they're rubbing it in a little bit. We often think of Jesus and his band of followers as being pretty independent. They wander, preach, throw out some miracles. But 
Scripture indicates that Jesus and his disciples are at the very least supported, quite possibly even bankrolled, by a whole community of supporters, many of them women. They feed and they house them as they go about their work. Mary and Martha, who get mentioned here first, and then their brother Lazarus, are no doubt part of Jesus' wider network of social and financial support. A part of an early, albeit scattered, community of believers. So as we all hunker down in our homes, some of us for settling in for the long haul, it's become apparent how important our network of friends, family and community are in helping us to feel normal and well. Even the most introverted of us are going to be missing contact with some loved ones and the more outwardly sociable are no doubt going stir crazy already. Combine this with a growing realisation that jobs previously thought of as unimportant or unskilled, menial work are actually pretty crucial to the functioning of our society. And we start to see just how interconnected and reliant we all are. It's my hope that when things settle down again, when we're out of the other side of this crisis, that we're able to more deeply recognise each other's worth and our common humanity. That we'll put in place social changes that mean we live less in isolated ways, less focused worrying only about our individual liberties and our wealth, more focused on our connection, our relationships and our responsibilities, especially for those who are most vulnerable in our society and for those whose work makes our life possible. I've always thought you can't just be a Christian on your own, you need to be part of that wider body of Christ. It's been a real blessing to see just how many people have been able to connect uh, with the wider chapel community during this time of isolation. I hope that as a group of believers we're able to be at the forefront of shaping a society that more closely resembles God's kingdom. Now is the time for physical separation, but it's also a good time to think about how we might do things better in the future, how we might change our reality in whatever big or small ways we can find. But back to Jesus. He's not just paying his friends a social call. He's coming to stand alongside them in their time of suffering, to grieve with them at the loss of Lazarus. It's feeling a bit like a time of national and international grieving at the moment. And the distancing we all have to observe makes that an even more challenging time. Jesus shows us how being physically present is important. How a sense of sorrow at being apart from loved ones, even in worrying times, is entirely justified. But this is a story not just of sorrow, but of hope. Martha is already hopeful. As a faithful first century Jew, she believes in the resurrection in the last day. A comfort certainly, but a rather, dif dis a rather distant one. Jesus takes that distant hope and makes it imminent and personal when he tells her, I am the resurrection and the life. Your cause for hope is not some unspecific date in the future, but it's here and it's now, standing alongside you. And in light of that theologically heavyweight statement, what happens next seems all the more poignant. Jesus wept. The resurrection and the life, the true life from which all life in creation takes its being, cries at the graveside of his friend. It's a reminder to us that even in our hope we are justified in our grief, that to mourn is part of our faith, that God is always close, perhaps even closest in moments of sorrow. But because it's a story of hope, it doesn't just end there. Jesus calls Lazarus to life and Lazarus rises from the dead. He gets up and he walks from his tomb, but he's still bound up with the grave clothes. So Jesus orders him to be untied. Let him go free. I wonder how many of us are eagerly awaiting that command to go free, to congregate and socialize where and whenever we want. Jesus reminds us that in him is new life and true freedom, but it's not simply a selfish freedom concerned only with our own rights. It's a freedom of connectedness, of relationship with God and with each other. 
Pope John Paul II said that freedom consists not in doing what we like, but in being able to do what we ought. And right now, what we ought to be doing is looking after each other, especially the most vulnerable amongst us. So it's my prayer that even in times of physical separation and what must be for many painful isolation, we might experience what it means to be truly free to know that God is near us even when we feel distant from those we love. And when it's time to be unbound, to live unencumbered by our current restrictions, that we're able to emerge a more compassionate, a more connected and a more hopeful society. Amen. Prayers of Intercession based on the reflections and objects found in our Lent in a Bag project. Let us pray. Dear Lord, let us reflect on sand. Currently, it is all too easy to remember our impermanence. Help us not to dwell on this in gloom, but acknowledge that we are your creation we rely on you for everything, but you will provide for us. In this season, we have been called into a more physical wilderness than we may have expected. Let us trust in your provision and resist the temptation to care only for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, let us reflect on stone. In this time of great need, we ask you to remove our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh. Soften us and fill us with your spirit. Allow us to embrace our vulnerabilities and remember that you are a firm foundation on which we can build our life. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, let us reflect on this heart. We pray for all those whose hopes, dreams and desires have had to be put on hold at this time. Help them to know that even in this time of great uncertainty, God never changes and that the fact that we are all his people is written on our hearts, intertwined with our inmost being. We pray that those whose hearts are hurting will find peace, and that all will strive to reflect God's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, let us reflect on this figure. We pray for all those for whom this period of isolation and quarantine is a very lonely time. We pray for those who feel alone, even if they are not physically, and for those who have been made more vulnerable by this situation in whatever form that takes. Through Jesus, Lord, you experienced our world as fully human. You know and feel the pain we suffer. Help us to know your comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, let us reflect on this candle. You sent Jesus to be your light in the world. We pray that we may never forget that in darkness there is always this light. We thank you for the gift of this light. May it reflect on us so brightly that we cannot fail to shine ourselves and lead others through dark times by your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, let us reflect on the world. We pray for our earth and everything she suffers at our hands. 
May the earth receive healing and may we as stewards never stop being considerate to her needs. We pray that we may treat each other with equal consideration and share the gift of our faith with others through our words and actions. We thank you for the many gifts you pour out upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's continue in prayer using the Teze chant, O Lord, hear my prayer. If you would like to sing with us, the words will be on the screen. Often in our worship, we use the words, peace be with you. Jesus shared those words to the disciples when they were huddled together in fear. After his death on the cross, he appeared in his resurrected form and said, peace be with you. We can't physically share the peace with one another at the moment, but I'm going to share a version of it in a form of sign language. Sign for peace. Be with you. Peace be with you. May we know that peace at this time. Thank you for joining us for worship today, whether you're usually with us or if you're joining us from further afield. For our regulars, do remember that the chaplains are still available if you need a chat or a listening ear or some practical support as far as we can under the circumstances, do be in touch. And look out for more services and resources on our YouTube and Facebook pages as we head towards Holy Week. For now, let's close our service. This is a blessing by John O'Donoghue uh, that was actually written for a new home, but with a little bit of adaptation, it seems fitting for our current situation. May this house shelter your life while you are at home here. May all the weight of the world fall from your shoulders. 
May your heart be tranquil here, blessed by peace the world cannot give. May this home be a place where all the graces your life desires always find the pathway to your door. May nothing destructive ever cross your threshold. May this be a safe place, full of understanding and acceptance, where you can be as you are, without the need of any mask of pretense or image. May this home be a place of discovery, where the possibilities that sleep in the clay of your soul can emerge to deepen and refine your vision for all that is yet to come to birth. May it be a house of courage, where healing and growth are found, where dignity and forgiveness prevail, a home where patience of spirit is prized and the sight of the destination is never lost. Though the journey may be difficult and slow, may there be great delight around this hearth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the one who creates, redeems and sustains you, be with you and all whom you love, this day and always. Amen.